Hello and welcome back. Today I'm revisiting our OneDrive review, Microsoft's in-house cloud storage service. It's been a while since we've covered OneDrive. Since our last review, a lot has changed in the service and I want to tell you if it's still worth in its current state. I must say, although it's been some time since the last OneDrive review, team over at cloudwords.net have constantly remained on top of each update of Microsoft's cloud storage. We also have a full course on Microsoft OneDrive in our CloudWords Academy that you can check out in the description below, but more on that later in the video. In this review, I'm going to relay all that my team of experts have uncovered to help you decide if it's the right cloud storage service for you. And one more comment about our testing methodology. We're not sponsored by Microsoft and all our opinions here are our own and are based on our own objective testing. We don't even get a kickback when you sign up for OneDrive through one of our links. So without further ado, sit back, grab a beverage and let's get into it, shall we? OneDrive isn't short on features and it's a great platform for productivity and collaboration. And as you might have guessed, it integrates seamlessly with other Microsoft products like all its Office tools. And let me be frank, if Microsoft is your preferred productivity suite, then OneDrive is a fantastic cloud storage option. Before discussing OneDrive's features, let's consider the cost. As the higher price plans offer more features, which is pretty standard practice for this type of software, with a Microsoft 365 account, you are not just purchasing cloud storage, but also entering the larger Microsoft ecosystem, like it or not. The good news is that you can try OneDrive for free before committing to a paid plan. The free plan only offers five gigabytes of storage space, so it won't be enough for moderate to heavy users. The entry level Microsoft 365 basic plan costs $19.99 per year or $1.99 when you pay monthly. You'll get a storage increase to 100 gigabytes and a 50 gigabytes mailbox. This plan also comes with web and mobile versions of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and OneNote. The next option is the Microsoft 365 personal plan, which increases the storage space to one terabytes and includes the desktop versions of Microsoft's productivity apps. It costs $69.99 per year or $6.99 on a monthly plan. If you want to share cloud storage with your family, there is a plan for that too. You can share a single account up to six family members with each person getting one terabyte of storage space and the family plan costs $99.99 annually or $9.99 if you want to pay for it monthly. If you need a business plan, Microsoft has several to choose from starting with OneDrive for business. You don't get all the productivity tools on this plan, instead only getting access to one terabyte of storage and nothing else. It costs $5 per user per month on the annual subscription. The top end business plan is called Microsoft 365 Business Standard and costs $12.50 per user per month on an annual subscription. It includes mobile and web versions of all Microsoft Office tools plus Microsoft Forms, Planner and Bookings. Other features include a custom business email and identity access and management for employees. And to make it a little more powerful than the other business plans, you also get desktop versions of Microsoft Office plus a collaborative workspace called Loop. You can also add in Microsoft's AI companion Copilot for an additional fee. Now that we've covered pricing, let's see what OneDrive can do. As you might have guessed, OneDrive revolves around using Microsoft apps. For example, if you create a Word document in OneDrive, you can work on and edit it without having to leave your account. And as you work, the changes you make will automatically get saved to the cloud. With Microsoft's productivity apps, you can collaborate with others online and in real time. And this lets virtual teams work on documents and see the changes, comments, and notes as they happen. And OneDrive also functions well with Microsoft Teams, obviously, which is Microsoft's communication tool. You can upload and share files while you are in a meeting or save files shared by others in your OneDrive account. 
Some business plans have access to Microsoft SharePoint, a robust tool for creating websites, online collaborative workspaces, and document repositories. Microsoft has a dedicated web page that has the full range of Microsoft apps. And if you are looking for any third-party apps such as Zoom or Slack, you won't find them in the Microsoft App Store. And hey, if you're really looking to squeeze out all that Microsoft OneDrive can offer, check out our in-depth course on Microsoft OneDrive. Head over to cloudwords.net course slash courses to know more or hit the link in the description box. Okay. So if you're looking for cloud storage with plenty of third-party integrations, be sure to check out Dropbox or Box.com. Both support apps from Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace, along with many other popular productivity apps. Now back to OneDrive. I'd like to point out a unique dedicated space called the Personal Vault. We will talk more about security and privacy later in, in this review. Um, however, the personal vault is a space to store items of more sensitive nature. What it sets it apart from a standard login is that it requires a separate code or even biometrics to unlock it. This adds more robust security for your sensitive files. Now, the personal vault isn't as secure as similar folders from, say, pCloud or iStrive, as it does not have zero-knowledge encryption. However, unlike those two privacy-focused cloud storage services, OneDrive's personal vault is available on the free plan. Another feature that comes with a OneDrive account is the option to back up your folders and files. Backing up isn't the same as syncing, as it only captures your data at the time of the backup. While it is a nice part of the OneDrive account. It is not a replacement for a full backup service as it won't back up your system files or applications or any other metadata. Let's spend some time exploring what it's like to use OneDrive. In my experience, OneDrive is easy to navigate. This is true if you're using the web app or the desktop and mobile apps. Your account on the web has a familiar layout with a menu sidebar on the left and your main content in the middle of the page. And the structure has a logical flow with easy access to your account settings and a large button to create or upload folders or files. There is a desktop app for Mac and Windows. And if you have a PC, OneDrive is likely already installed on your device. Overall, the desktop app is little more than a sync folder with a menu icon. There are a few settings you can interact with, such as using the backup feature. You can also manage bandwidth, take advantage of selective sync, or enable files on demand. Files on demand keeps your content in the cloud and only downloads folders or files when you use them, which is great to free up space on your local hard drive. And I use this all the time because Compared to my files, my hard drive is tiny and yours probably too. If you have an iOS or Android device, you can download the OneDrive mobile app and use your account on the go. It has many of the same features and functions as you would find using the desktop or web app. And with the OneDrive mobile app, you can set up automatic camera uploads or use your camera to capture documents, whiteboards, business cards, receipts, you name it. Cloud storage has two main functions, file synchronization, and sharing. OneDrive does both of those things very well. OneDrive supports differential sync, which means that it will only update the parts of the file you change rather than uploading and downloading the entire file. Unfortunately, differential sync is only available on business plans. I find file sharing to be a breeze with OneDrive. You can share folders or files from the web, desktop, or mobile app. And when you share a folder or file, you can choose to create a link that you can then paste or you can invite individuals using their email addresses into that folder. With a paid plan, you can also include an expiration date for links or add a password for another layer of protection. Additionally, when inviting individuals to collaborate, you can set the level of access they have. You can choose from letting them edit or restricting access to view only. 
One thing I like is that you can always adjust these settings at any time, even after you've shared an item. So it's never too late. Before I continue, do me a favor and hit that like button so I know to continue making these videos like this one. Also, hey, I checked my analytics and noticed that 90% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Wow. Okay, I really need to let that sink in a bit. <sighs> now, it's a small click for you, but it would really help the channel to grow and deliver top-notch and independent content. And hey, I might also be able to afford a cup of coffee for my teammates here. All the features and functionality in the world won't matter much if the cloud service is slow. Fortunately, during our independent testing, OneDrive posted fast upload and download speeds. A quick bit of housekeeping here. When we test a cloud storage service, we use a virtual server capable of one gigabits per second, which we slow down to 100 megabits per second to ensure a stable test environment and a more real life scenario. We use a five gigabytes test folder and run two separate speed tests to arrive at an average. OneDrive has fast upload speeds, averaging seven minutes and 31 seconds. Download speeds were even faster at seven minutes and 17 seconds. These results, which I know you'll like, mean that OneDrive won't slow you down, even in working with large files, and I do that a lot. <laughs> or if you're working with hundreds of files, this won't slow you down. So far, it may seem that OneDrive is one of the best cloud storage services available, and it is true that there's a lot to like about OneDrive. However, we're going to spend the next few minutes discussing two important aspects of a cloud service, and that's security and privacy. Overall, security is a strong point with OneDrive. It uses AES-256 bit encryption to protect the data on your account when it's stored on OneDrive servers, and that's industry standard and will protect your data from cyber threats like brute force attacks. When you transfer data, OneDrive secures the process with TLS SSL encryption protocols. This type of encryption protects against man-in-the-middle attacks, which attempt to impersonate the recipient and steal all your data in simple terms. If you want to be proactive with your account security, you can enable two-factor authentication using an authenticator app. You can use Microsoft's app, but if you want, you can use any Authenticator app. It will work just as well. I'll note that this setting applies to your entire Microsoft account, not just OneDrive though. Another option is to enable passwordless account login. As the name suggests, you won't use a password to access your account with this feature enabled, which reduces the risk of your login credentials being compromised. Similar to two-factor authentication, you'll need to use the Microsoft Authenticator app with the passwordless account login. Perhaps the biggest knock against using OneDrive is with privacy. Despite the inclusion of a personal vault in your account, which does not encrypt your files, OneDrive does not have zero knowledge encryption. And this means that at any time, OneDrive could access your account because your login credentials are stored on its servers. If you spend any time on Microsoft websites, you'll likely notice marketing materials that go on and ramble on about the company's commitment to your privacy. But don't be fooled. Microsoft collects a lot of data on you and how you use its product. It's also likely to share this data with third-party companies. Microsoft may not be as intrusive as Google, but really, that's just splitting hairs. You do have some control over your privacy, which you can see in the privacy section of your Microsoft account. Options include clearing browsing history, view location tracking data, or limiting which apps have access to your account. You can also opt out of target ads and personalize marketing emails. Oh, wow, great. Make no mistake, however, Microsoft owns the cards in this deal. Its privacy policy details just how much data it collects, how it uses it, and with whom it shares data. Some of the shared data includes your personal information, and sometimes it is shared with Microsoft's affiliates. If you aren't comfortable with the level of privacy using Microsoft, 
And to be honest, I wouldn't blame you. You can check out cloud storage services like Sync.com. Sync.com has zero knowledge encryption that protects an entire account, even a free one. And we have videos and articles about that service. Go have a look. OneDrive has many positives, which make it an attractive cloud storage option, especially for those already vested in the Microsoft ecosystem. It's easy to use and has affordable plans while also being a solid choice for productivity and collaboration. Where OneDrive falters is when used outside of Microsoft apps, and it takes a big stumble when it comes to privacy, as we've seen above. If you're asking me, I'd say by all means, use it if you love Microsoft Office tools, own a PC, and don't mind its poor privacy approach. But if you're not a diehard Microsoft fan invested in its ecosystem, then I'd suggest an alternative. You can find one of the best cloud storage services in our video that I'll leave you in the description box below or up here. Do the clickety click, you know how it works. So there you have it, our OneDrive review. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informative. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the moment we upload a new video. And what do you think about OneDrive? Have you used it in the past or are you a current subscriber? How likely are you to try OneDrive? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.